What if there was one thing that would cause you to be successful? What if there was one thing that you could do causing you to win? What if there were one credential that would cause some of the things which have never been seen or heard of to happen for you? There is. It's called loving God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared, watch this, for them that love him. What does it mean? It means impossible things happen for us when we love God. Eyes have not seen the things that happen for us when we love God. My objective is to encourage you to love God. I want to use several people for examples to illustrate what was the major credential held by these people. The credential that distinguished them was simply their love for God. Solomon's love for God was beautiful. The Bible says Solomon loved the Lord and he went to Gibeon to sacrifice there and he sacrificed a thousand burnt offerings. And the Lord appeared to Solomon in, in a dream at night and said, ask what I will give you. Ask for anything. Listen, forget about what you heard about Solomon. Most religions only emphasize the negative. This is the positive. He was only required to bring one burnt offering. He brought 1,000. But think about this. What happened next will blow your mind. Eyes had never seen this before. God gave Solomon a blank check saying, ask me for whatever you want. And when God says whatever, he means whatever. How did Solomon express his love for God? By his generosity. He sacrificed a thousand burnt offerings. This is a message to all non-givers. Keep your money in your pocket if you like. But God will never ask you, what do you want? You can't outgive God. And then there's Daniel. Daniel went into his house, opened the window where everyone could see him praying because that's how he always prayed. Three times a day, Daniel did this knowing that they had the king to swear that anyone who prayed to any god except the king would be thrown into the den of lions. Daniel's unwavering commitment to praying to God despite the king's decree illustrates his love for God. Daniel knew that the decree was signed, but he went into his house and knelt down before an open window three times a day and gave thanks, just like he always did. But guess what? God made the lions peaceful. They were probably showing each other affection. Eyes had never seen that before. Nobody had ever heard of that before. What about Job's endurance? Despite immense suffering, Job's faith and love for God remained steadfast. In one day, Job received the news that all of his wealth was destroyed that all of his children were killed. Just listen to what scripture records him as doing. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Here's what he said. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, that's loving God. Amen. And then something happened to Job that had never happened to anyone. Remember, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard what God has prepared for them that love him. 
God not only restored Job, but God gave Job twice as much yeah. as he had before, causing everyone to bring him gifts and money. Listen, Job already had more than everybody. Amen. God also gave Job more beautiful daughters than he had before, so that there were none, no daughters, more beautiful than the daughters of Job. Eyes or ears have never seen or heard of that before. Then there's the woman with the alabaster uh, jar or box, whatever you want to call it. This woman anointed Jesus with expensive perfume, showing deep love and gratitude. You know, she stood at his feet. She stood behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, her, her own tears. Then she began to wipe them with the hairs of her head. And guess what? She kissed his feet and anointed them with the oil, with the, with the ointment. And he turned and said to Simon, Simon, do you see this woman? Can you see her? I, I came to your house. You invited me to dinner, and you didn't give me no water for my feet. I guess Simon didn't want to seem overzealous, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. I also noticed that you didn't give me no kiss. See, God notices when you love on him and when you don't. Yes. But this woman, since the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. See, Simon, you invited me to dinner. You, you, you spread the table, but there was no, no oil. You didn't anoint my head. You didn't give me no kiss. You didn't give me no water for my feet. And this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto you, her sins, which are many, because I know y'all wondering about me having anything to do with this kind of woman touching me, but her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Amen. Why? Because she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven? The same loveth little. See, I forgave her for a lot. And I'm going to tell her now. Woman, your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Now you can go in peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. You've been made completely whole. Amen. God. Notice this sinful woman. She came where Jesus was, sitting at meat. She dared to approach him at his feet. Then sensing his love and forgiveness and began expressing her love for him in most practical ways. She washed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. Jesus extended to this woman what she needed most. What did she need most? Forgiveness of all of her heinous sin. She came in one way. She left another way. Amen. He assured her of her salvation, saying, your faith has saved you. Praise God. What you have done has caused you to be saved. This was unheard of. A sinful woman at dinner with Jesus, approaching him, kissing his feet, washing his feet with her tears, drying them with her hair, and then receiving his verbal approval. 
and then receiving salvation and then receiving his commendation. The righteous men at this table had never heard or seen anything like it. Each of these biblical figures and stories provides a rich foundation for exploring the theme of loving God. I hope these examples give you a deeper understanding of how to love God and how love for God is expressed and lived out in the Bible. Listen, Jesus will accept your love. He will forgive you for your sins. But you have to act on your faith. Notice he said, your faith has saved you. She loved much because she knew how much he forgave her for when he forgave her. Never had such a woman been forgiven. But when you love God, remarkable things happen. Amen. Praise Simon had invited Jesus for dinner, but he didn't love on him. If just prayer isn't helping, if simple praise is not helping, if simply reading the Bible isn't helping you, try loving God. Try loving God. It always works. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul. Remember, eye has not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. I'm Apostle Evans, and remember, it's a sin not to win.